The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. Farmers make up only a small part of the population, which means most folks never get a chance to see where their food and clothing come from. Today we'll visit a North Alabama family that's trying to change that by inviting thousands of people to their farm every year. Many farmers spend the colder months of the year deciding what crops to grow. This morning, we'll see what some growers are expecting for 2016. And Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants is visiting with our friend Dr. A this morning to talk about the best ways to detect the pests you can and can't see in your garden. Well, we're starting out today's show in Elmore County, visiting with a retired couple who have turned a farming hobby into a culinary treasure. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece of farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. As an Alpha agent, I know we start out protecting ourselves and the things that we cherish, but I just recently got engaged. And let me tell you, life is coming fast. So we want to protect the people we love. I can't wait to see what life brings. Alpha insurance is for wherever you are in life and for what's next. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. If you know a farmer, you understand the importance of knowing where your food comes from. As consumers nationwide increasingly demand a fresher local product, businesses are becoming more familiar with their local growers. This week takes us to Oak View Farms in Wetumpka, which is making a name for itself by bringing farm fresh straight to your plate. If you live in the central Alabama area, you may have seen the name Oak View Farms on a restaurant menu. Increasingly popular for their stone ground grits, their products can be found in restaurants from Auburn as far north as Birmingham. The meal started out as a hobby and it started growing. Food TV, one of stone ground products, one of fresh products. Uh, our chefs started wanting uh, local grown, consumers wanted local grown. Uh, it's just grown from there. Montgomery's La Jolla is an example of the beneficial relationship the food industry is building with local farms. As well as their grits, the restaurant offers fresh Oakview produce throughout the year. Our main products are the romaine, uh, he does a, a bib lettuce. Uh, depending on what he's growing on the, type, the time of the year, uh, Brussels sprouts, collards, uh, and of course his grits. La Jolla is one of many restaurants responding to an increasing customer demand for local produce. Being only a short drive away, Oakview Farms has become a popular stop for Beatty and other area chefs. We've got a good relationship with all our chefs, and uh, a lot of them come and pick. You know, like you saw La Jolla here today, Springhouse was here yesterday. Uh, they put our name on the menu, and it's good for them, is that they're buying local, or we're, we're kind of networking with all the restaurants, and it's good for us too. I think it's pretty amazing the fact that, that I can come here in the morning 
grab lettuce that no one's touched before, take it to the restaurant and sell it that night. And I mean, you don't get any fresher than that. You know, it's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. From hydroponic lettuce year round to spring strawberries, fresh eggs, honey, and more, Joe Lambrick and his wife Patty have steadily increased the variety of what they produce as more customers directly seek out their farm. We have a retail store here at our farm. So we move a lot of product through a small retail store here. Last week we had some here from Canada. They were coming through, had heard about us on, us on the internet. Stopped through, they were headed to uh, uh, Port St. Joe. So they stopped in, got some product, got some lettuce, got some grits, uh, and then went on to Port St. Joe. This increased interest has led to somewhat of an evolution for farms like Oakview. In addition to maintaining their crops, the Lambricks have ramped up public relation efforts with UPIC availability, playful goats, school tours, and involvement in efforts to further promote agricultural awareness. We've done an Ag in a Classroom. Uh, that, was a, that was a great uh, program we had there. We had about 100 teachers here. And at that time, we, uh, we also don't do bees. We had, our bee, we had some bee stuff here. We had set out for the teachers. They were very interested in that. For consumers, resellers, and restaurants like La Jolla, this direct relationship with farms like Oakview is as much of a selling point as the food they produce. For the Lambricks, it makes all the hard work that much more rewarding. I live right down the road. Um, and country miles, we're probably neighbors, you know. Um, but it's been a good relationship, you know. Um, it's been nice, I've, I've enjoyed it. It, it, it. I think it makes a difference. You know, Patty and I retired from, from jobs and, and, and we've been married all our life. And then this just kind of evolved. I mean, it was just a hobby that grew. We've not looked back, we've not regretted it. Uh, we, we have to run pretty hard. Some weeks pretty tough on us, but yeah, we still go it. If you're in the Watomka area, drop in on Joe and Patty and pick up some lettuce, honey, or grits. The general store is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 9 to 4. And ask what they've got fresh to pick for yourself. You know, I've been out to their store. It really is great. But they also have a little closed-in porch where you can sit there with the rocking chairs. And surprisingly, the cats actually like that room. Are they nervous? You would think. <laughs> Family farms come in a variety of sizes and produce a wide variety of crops. Up next on Simply Southern, we'll visit one unique operation that some call the Disney World of North Alabama. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor. Because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish. Because your family deserves the best. U.S. Farm-Raised Catfish. Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Telling the story of agriculture is a responsibility that farmers across the country take seriously. 
As you saw earlier with the Lambricks at Oakview Farms, building a relationship with the public is an investment benefiting farmers and consumers alike. While many farms encourage a quick stop for fresh food, the folks at Tate Farms in Madison County have gone a step further. As Samantha Carpenter explains, they've turned their operation into a wildly popular tourist destination. When fall rolls around in North Alabama, the words Tate Farms are music to children's ears. We're the Disney World of North Alabama, and people that can't afford to go to Disney World, they come here. What began as a row crop operation has evolved over the years into a popular fall tourist destination, featuring food, fun, and all the pumpkins you could hope to pick. Want this one? We typically have people from Atlanta, Chattanooga, Nashville, as far uh, far south as Montgomery, and as far and going as far west uh, in the middle of Mississippi, coming over just to become our pumpkin patch. Tate is one of many farming operations across the country who are courting public interest in a practice popularly coined agritourism. From hosting weddings to full-fledged entertainment venues such as at Tate's, this public exposure has proven valuable for farmers, exposing visitors to the world of agriculture. Boys and girls, what is this field behind me? What are we growing? We've grown our whole operation in the sense of the pumpkin patch itself by the education purpose. You know, you hear that, oh, we got to educate, we got to educate. Well, we do it here. We don't, we don't talk it, we do it. And nowhere is education more important than in the schools. Mornings at Tate Farms are filled with the sound of school buses and laughing children. Here you go. <laughs> with everything from hay rides and petting zoos to tube slides and corn mazes, it's easy to see what makes the Tates a favorite for field trips. We got to jump a lot, we got to jump and just bounce on our bellies. Kids know that they come here to have a great time. What they don't realize is that they're learning about agriculture while they do it. We learn how to milk a cow and that there are, um, there were 17 slates that grow pumpkins. We've really made some connections with the local schools. Um, they've started ag programs in the elementary school where they grow their food. If they need somebody to come talk about ag for Ag Day, if they want to know about starting a garden for their gardening program, they call us and we do what we can to assist them, whether it's taking them a tractor and plowing up the ground to get it ready for their kids or providing them with produce, we're able to do that. Farming is a disease and when you catch it, you can't get rid of it. And, uh, and I've got it. Um, and I, I hope to instill it in these kids. <laughs> As any teacher could tell you, capturing a child's attention in this modern world of information is no easy task. Tate Farms and other agritourism efforts start by making a day on the farm fun, perhaps sparking an interest in these kids towards learning more about agriculture. I hope they're getting an understanding of where their food comes from, an appreciation for agriculture, and that they will grow up being a um, being pro-ag. I hope they get that appreciation for farming and having food grown in their country and in their community here. I hope they start that here. And you got to continue to change those lives and to bring that happiness and joy to people uh, that, that may not ever step foot on a farm again the rest of their life. But, but in this event, there we go. We got something to change people. For Simply Southern, I'm Samantha Carpenter. If the orange pumpkins and leaves didn't give it away, Samantha's visit to Tate Farms actually coincided with their popular fall pumpkin patch. That's open yearly from the last week in September through October. You can get information on school tours and all the family fun at Tate Farms at their website, tatefarmsal.com. You know, that's really a great place for people to learn where their food and clothing come from. It is because they're enjoying themselves while they're there, but they're also getting educated at the same time. That is true. Farmers spend much of the year growing what they planted, but there are a number of factors to consider. When Simply Southern continues, we'll see what Alabama farmers expect from the 2016 growing season.
Brought to you by the Alabama Beef Checkoff Program. Fire up the grills. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Seriously? Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt a Maya with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't drop it on Alabama! Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The tag funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. For nearly 50 years, the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama have been giving young people an opportunity to visit our nation's capital, where they learn about the value of electric cooperatives and the importance of grassroots advocacy. Top students join with thousands of others touring monuments, landmarks, and meeting with their congressional delegation. The Rural Electric Youth Tour Program, just one more way the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama are investing in the future of our state. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor. Because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish. Because your family deserves the best. U.S. farm-raised catfish crop prices, fuel and fertilizer costs, and product demand are just a few of the factors farmers consider when deciding what crops to plant each year. As Kevin Worthington tells us, 2016 crop prices are down, but so are most of the costs associated with growing those crops. Whether they've had a bumper crop or had to cut their budgets, Farmers from across the state are leaving 2015 behind and getting ready for the opportunity of a new year. Tuscaloosa County row crop and cattle farmer John E. Walker is catching up with budgets after last year's harvest, fixing machinery and feeding cattle. But he's also preparing to battle low commodity prices for the remainder of 2016. All farmers, including myself, are concerned about being able to make a profit next year, commodity prices have dropped, have dropped. and uh, in, in just about you know any, any one of them, soybeans, corn, wheat, cattle's dropped off of the all-time highs that they made last year, which they still you know bring a pretty good price. Starting at the beginning of April, the Walkers plant corn, and that's followed by cotton and soybeans later in the month. Walker says he's already planning on adjusting his rotation to account for yield and price, but cooperative weather keeps him hopeful. Well, the rain that we've gotten is, is beneficial because it replenishes the subsoil moisture, you know, and you need that going into the planting season. You don't want to go into it, with, you know, real dry. And I think, I guess, the exception of uh, parts of California, the whole country is been relieved of this, the droughty situation, so should have some, you know, good crops next year. A recent study by the University of Indiana estimated fertilizer costs will reach their lowest point since 2009, while oil prices are expected to experience 12-year lows. Walker says lower energy inputs and previously successful harvests should also help ease the vice grip of low yields and crop prices. We've had, you know, several good crops here in a row, which is pretty uncommon for us down here in the south with, uh, you know, most of, the, most of the row crops down here dry, and we have a little bit of air, irrigation, so that's helped us a lot. Fertilizer will be down like, you, like we talked about, and uh, fuel's down, so that'll help. But they hadn't really dropped the price of seed. They had a lot of technology in the seed and a lot of investment and research. With over 45 years of farming experience, Walker's no stranger to a down year. With corn, soybeans, cotton, wheat, and cattle, he's hoping his diversified operation will help him weather the storm. Well, diversification is really important uh, on our farm, most anybody else's, because a lot of years you might make 
you know, we got really four ways to make money. And uh, you might hit on three of them, have a bad crop on one of them or two, whatever. You got all your eggs in one basket, you know, those saying, you know, then you, uh, if you have a bad crop, you just, it, it can put you out of business. So the first case it really helps. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. Of course, another important factor that contributes to the success of a crop is the weather, but it's also something that all farmers deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's true. You can have high commodity prices and low input prices, mm -hmm. and then it'll start raining at harvest time and it won't stop raining. They've got more nerve than I've got. That's absolutely right. It's too easy to flood out a good crop. True enough. Mm -hmm. Right after this break, Sidney Phelps from Bonnie Plants and Dr. A from the Extension System are talking about dealing with pests in your garden. When AJ was born with a heart defect, we practically lived at the hospital. We weren't prepared for that. My Alpha customers, my Alpha family made sure we had everything we needed. Now I'm even more motivated to help take care of them. Who I am fits what I do. I am Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Today I'm back at Auburn University again visiting with Dr. A to talk about pest detection. Now, We've got pests that we can see, and there's also those pests that we can't see. So today we're going to talk with Dr. A and find out exactly how we can detect these and what are the best ways to looking and finding those. So Dr. A, thank you again for being on the show with us. All right. Thank you, Sydney, and thank you uh, to all the uh, audience who are looking at this. And uh, as an entomologist, I get a lot of questions about uh, how to detect insect pests. And we have to remember we have soil pests and we have above ground pests which are re easy to see but those soil pests are sneaky. They're in the ground and you have to learn to monitor for them. And uh, one of the simple ways, some of the simple ways are uh, taking a shovel and draw a soil sample just like you would do for uh, a soil analysis of your garden. And, uh, but take a more amount and at more locations. Yeah, I always recommend a soil sample before starting any garden. Absolutely. Making sure that you're getting the right nutrients, but it even, even works good for pests. Absolutely, and then go through that soil sample really carefully. If you have uh, pests like wireworms, white grubs, uh, especially if you have uh, kind of a grassy, weedy area, you'll see these insects uh, hanging out there, and they will start crawling out from the soil sample if there are too many. Uh, but they can devastate the crop if you don't control them. And uh, today, luckily, we have very good granular insecticides. And uh, I'll just add very quickly that with soil pests, uh, and if you're using granular insecticides like uh, the seven uh, granular insecticides or bifenthrin-based products, use them in February or March, okay. just when the insects are getting active. Right, as they start to come out of the soil. come out. And you put it down and keep it uh, in the soil ahead of the insects so that when they, as they come up, they start to exposed to the insecticides and die. Okay. Uh, don't put them out right before a big rain, uh, so then it will cause a washout of the product. All right. um, but those granular insecticides, if you do it uh, a couple of times a year, 
that helps to reduce the population and, and manage it better. Okay, so let's say that our gardeners have got their, their it's already getting warm, uh, they've got that granular down and that barrier is set. Uh, what are some common practices for those above ground pests that we can use to, to detect, especially, you know, cabbage worms, cut worms, mm -hmm. uh, all those different things that come into the garden throughout the season. What are some right. good detection methods? Um, basically, it boils down that uh, there's no shortcut to scouting. Okay. Scouting is, a, is still a very critical tool. You have to look into the crop canopy, uh, look under the plant. Uh, don't forget plants, uh, insects uh, are tricky and they will drop off the plants as you approach them. So um, as you're looking, look under the plants, um, look in the soil as we talked about. And then if you uh, are really into insect monitoring, what I recommend is, uh, especially for new farmers, is to use sticky wing pheromone traps. Uh, this is a sticky trap and it has a top and a bottom, it's a sticky bottom, and it uses a, a lure um, that you can put inside and that attracts the insects uh, to these. And these are excellent for uh, trapping some of the uh, moths okay. early in the season. Well, Dr. Ray, I know you've got a ton of information, especially this on chewing and sucking uh, pests that you can find out. You can find all this on Dr. A's website, which you can see the link below, and you can also check out bonnieplants.com or the mobile app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. You know, if you catch cabbage worms in your garden, you better get them out in a hurry or they can just eat a plant down overnight. I didn't realize that, but yeah, definitely get them out so that you can make your coleslaw. That's right. Yeah. Now, BonniePlants.com has lots of information about planting your backyard garden. If you want information specifically about pest control, you can check out Dr. A's webpage. You can also find out more information about the stories we've featured today by visiting their individual websites. For updates on what's in season at Oakview Farms near Montgomery, visit their website at oakviewfarms.com. To book a school group visit or other event at Tate Farms in Madison County, click on tatefarmsal.com. And for any kind of information you may need about Alabama agriculture, go to alphafarmers.org. While you're online, be sure to like our Facebook page or head on over to simplysoutherntv.net for more information on our show or to view past episodes. We hope you'll be back with us next Sunday morning as we take a trip back in time to the site of Alabama's first capital. And thanks to new technology developed at Auburn University, you'll be able to view our world in a way that you've probably never seen it before. Thanks for joining us for Simply Southern today. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. We hope you'll be back with us again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.